Hello there and welcome back to the studio today. So today is going to be in the same type of paint along style as the previous episode. You will have the photo reference to the top left corner of your screen and you'll be able to see all of the paint mixtures as well as every single brush stroke involved in the painting that we'll create in this episode. Just bear in mind that this is going to be a paint along uh, painting demonstration so don't expect it to be as realistic of a painting as uh, other videos that I've uploaded. So the colors that you'll need to follow along with me are titanium white, burnt umber, a lizard permanent or you can also use a lizard crimson cadmium red yellow ochre sap green ultramarine blue and ivory black and below the screen here i have my odorless mineral spirits and then my uh, medium which is a uh, gamblin's i believe it's the solvent free fluid let me see here there you go gambling solvent free fluid but you could use any medium that you'd like now I'm going to set the autofocus to uh, manual so that it doesn't start to focus on my hand throughout the footage so a little bit of the mineral spirits and a little bit of burnt umber and we're going to start off with a good old umber sketch so remember this is going to be paint along style so i will be painting and talking at the same time but also note that i won't be filling up the episode with too much talk however there will be times where i'll be a little bit more quiet so consider this as a uh, consider me as a studio friend so just put this video on while you're working in your own studio um, if you're working at home or wherever I'll be your voice guiding you along this demonstration. And of course, feel free to work on your own uh, artwork as well. Uh, and the surface is an eight by 10 inch cotton canvas that I stretched myself and then toned with acrylic. So just a regular old cotton canvas. So right now I'm just thinking of the basic placement of the head, how large I want the head to be on the canvas. Since this is an 8 by 10 inch, which is rather small, I'd say I would probably want to move the chin maybe to about there. And give or take, I think that, that ought to do for the placement of the head. And shoulder will fall somewhere about there. The ramus of the jaw. So I usually go for the um, the envelope. So the big outside shape. That's usually what I look for first when I'm blocking in a portrait. And I should also mention, if you would like to have access to this photo reference, our model, by the way, uh, is Lili. Uh, if you'd like to have access to the photo reference, just go to the bottom of the description box down below, and you'll have a link to the Facebook photo reference group. Or you can just go on Facebook and type Yupari uh, photo reference group. You should be able to find it. So the ear goes somewhere about there. All right, so I think we are at a good enough point now to start to go into the the interior shapes. So let's start off with the corner of the eye socket here. Make a little shape there. Now the trick with the drawing brush is to not have that much mineral spirits, just enough to get the paint to flow, but not be overly tacky either. 
And with the umber sketch, uh, you don't really want to spend as much time with the outlines uh, as you would with a transfer drawing or if you were working uh, with uh, dry media such as uh, graphite or charcoal. And that's because these lines really aren't going to be permanent. We're going to go right over top of these lines. So I'm going to use a little horizontal comparison. So I'm using comparative measurement. So um, the photo reference is actually much further away from me. I actually have it on a TV screen at the moment. Pretty far away from me. So I'm trying to mimic what it's like to work from life, uh, to work from nature, which is my preferred way to work. So no details, we don't need any details just yet. And I'm trying to see what can I get away with uh, in terms of, you know, what, how simple can I keep these marks? So I think the nose actually needed to go down a tad bit more. So I'm going to use a good old bristle brush. And I just spilled all my mineral spirits. But oh well. So just a bristle brush, mineral spirits. Now since I did spill my <laughs> mineral spirits, I'm going to have to use paper towel. So in case my hands look shiny, it's the mineral spirits. It's good for you. Just kidding. <laughs> Whenever you have mineral spirits on your hands, you definitely want to clean them off. So give me a second there. All right, hands are clean from the mineral spirits. Now we're gonna move down, say to about here. Now, um, likeness isn't really going to happen uh, that quickly when you're working with the umber sketch in this kind of way. Now, if this were a much longer exercise, then yeah, I would spend much more time with the outlines. But for these purposes, just a few simplifications here and there ought to suffice okay so now that I have a rough uh, rough is the keyword here a rough uh, idea of where everything is going to fit I'm not going to stress too much about the uh, outlines. So now I'm just going to go ahead and go right for color. So yellow ochre, titanium white. And let's just see if we can start off with a color note just just like this. Very simple. There we go. Starting with our lightest lights. So burnt umber, cadmium red, more titanium white. And yes, I normally have two whites on the uh, palette, but yet I still have yet to uh, purchase more uh, flake white. I usually have flake white there, but just titanium white for today. 
So we're just going in with very simple color notes here, color and value notes. I'm not going to worry too much about the details for the eyes or anything like that. I'm just going in with big shape. And I usually like to start off right around here, right around the eyes and the nose, keeping the color rather simple. Now with the um, with the hair, I'm not really going to stress too much about the hair. So let's just focus on this for now. Just making it a little more pink with the cadmium red. This might be too pink. You never know until you try. That's pretty good. And if you're following along with your um, with your crayons or with your charcoal or your graphite pencil or whichever media you're using, you can still work in the same way. Just think about these as just values. No need to complicate it. Now we're going to drop in value as we go down here. So as you can tell, clearly drop down in value. Let's put in a shape for the concavity of the eye socket. Let's make it a little teeny tiny bit red. The alizarin permanent. Now notice how I've completely omitted the eyes for now. So especially if you're you're a beginner in uh, portrait painting. Try and practice looking at the large structures when you're working in this style. Now you can clearly tell why I didn't need so much for the outlines. Just enough. While we're doing this, I'm actually going to do something a little different this time. I'm actually going to go for the background color. So ivory black, and let's just use some sap green. Ivory black, sap green. And let's just use this. Now no extra medium is applied to the paint just yet. And what I'm doing with the background color is I am actually drawing the contour and I'm using the greenish tint to push the variation in the hues a little bit. Sorry, my hand is blocking the footage there.
So notice that I'm not really that worried about the photo reference. I threw the background a little bit more greenish. So really with the background, you can do whatever you want. I just chose greenish. So a little bit more light, a little bit pink. So I'm keeping the flesh tones very simple. As you can see, just the titanium white, the cadmium red, and some of the flesh colors that were obviously already on there will suffice. Now remember, glare is my eternal nemesis. So it is reflecting quite a bit. So I'm gonna use my fan brush. I don't know if this will help with anything, but Usually if you move the paint or the brush stroke in the direction of the light, it kind of helps to reduce glare. I'm just cleaning off the brush on the canvas since we're going to cover that later anyway. Now with photo reference, it's very difficult to see structure. Um, so really we kind of have to make things up sometimes. So I'm here I'm actually changing up the value a little bit to add a little bit more dimensionality. Gonna make this a little bit lighter. But on the photo reference, it kind of looks the same to me depending on your screen, really. It may look different to you. See how I have a very clear plane break? One, two, three, four, keeping these planes very simple. And there we have a different plane. So we have lots of planes of color, planes of flesh tone. So sap green, lizard and permanent. Now, depending on the uh, how my computer is feeling, this video may end up being a little bit late. Usually I try to aim for 11 a.m. for an upload. And by the way, if you're on my Patreon, today is the day. Today is the first Saturday of the month. So I will be doing a live stream painting demo at 12 o'clock today. So if you're in the live stream tier on my Patreon, don't forget the first Saturday of the month, 12 o'clock p.m., live stream demonstrations. So I'm throwing a little bit more warmth, a little more cadmium red. Now I'm going to switch brushes. So those are in permanent. 
Sap green. And now we're going to start to add some smaller shapes to the main triangle. And this is the part where I'm probably going to get really quiet as this will require a lot of focus. So if I'm quiet for a long period of time, just know that I'm focused on building these structures for you. It is also possible to overthink it. So sometimes you just want to be intuitive with it. Sometimes you just want to feel, feel what plane or what color or what structure you're working on. Just feel out the shape. Sometimes you just want to work with instinct. This really does balance both uh, quote unquote left brain and right brain type thinking and problem solving. You're creative, but you're also analytical at the same time. It's a very unique process. You know, I'm going to take the background brush and actually um, use it for some of the values for the hair. I'm going to use this to put a little accent mark for the eyebrow. It's kind of suggesting where that's going to go.
lots of little mineral spirits and some burnt umber. Just go ahead and start to draw a little bit. So remember, a thinner paint tends to stick onto thicker paint. Whoops. And this stage of the painting is quite nerve wracking actually, when you just start to indicate some of the features. This is usually where the awkward stage happens. You just kind of have to roll with it. Just trust in your drawing. Now with a different brush, titanium white, ivory black. A little more titanium white. Different brush, sap green, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of yellow ochre. Now this process is not as forgiving um, as the uh, classical approach, but as a as a on the positive side, it is much faster. So we can say what we want to say a little bit more quickly, but it is kind of a slippery slope in terms of drawing. So that's kind of why I'm using smaller brushes now. With smaller brushes, it's a little easier to control. Because the drawing can definitely cause some issues. Does anyone want to see any landscapes? I actually took some pictures of uh, Manassas Park, Virginia. I went a couple a couple weeks ago now. I have some pictures I can work from. And I know you probably want me to work from life, but it's kind of cold right now in my area. I know most of uh, most of the viewers, most of uh, viewers of this channel expect portrait, but I kind of want to do landscape to change things up.
Now I'm starting to draw the upper eyelid. And just like a drawing, I'm trying to keep the shape simple and easy. As I always say, if you keep your shape simple and easy, then the corrections, if there are any corrections, which for me there always are, they're simple and easy to manage. So I'm moving the eyebrow up a little bit. Now beware of the awkward stage. Don't let it get to you. I think it's about time for some new brushes too. So when the brush starts to subtract paint rather than apply it and you have the right amount of thinner on it, that usually means the brush is ready to die. This one is like on its last. And with synthetic brushes, there's almost really no comeback. Though with bristle, I mean, when a bristle brush wears out, like when this one wears out, it actually turns into a really nice um, subtractive brush, but not so much synthetics. Not always though. This used to be really like, like straight. Kind of like, hmm, don't have any good brushes anymore. But this one actually works really nicely after it was worn out. So I also used this for scrubbing. It all depends on the type of synthetic, but um, this one is more or less like a watercolor brush. So those don't actually recycle too well in terms of uh, paint handling. So just simple shapes of flesh tone for today. A little bit of red.
the values much brighter over here. I think it's darker as it turns over here. Now perhaps working larger would have made my life a little easier <laughs> for this demo. So my advice to you, make this a little larger than 8 by 10 inches. I'm actually going to use the fan brush to simplify this to make the edges soft yet again. I'm actually going to move the eye a little bit. It's much harder to move the eye than most other things, so. I notice it needs to move, so I might as well do that now. It needs to move maybe just there, a millimeter really. Now all the details for the eye, just forget it. That it looks like an eye at a distance is all I care about right now. I just kind of push the eye inwards a little. The nose, as a consequence, I also kind of moved a little bit. That's why I said don't put too much detail. Had I put, had I rendered that eye so much, it would have been a pain to move it. And I'm actually going to move the nose down and over to the left a little bit.
still need to move it further down. And I'm making all these decisions by eye. So just using comparative measurement. So just measuring by observation and comparing shape. So a little bit more red into the middle tones. Just throw in a highlight. So I think those movements that I made with the eye and with the nose should help. But when you're struggling with um, an area in a painting, in particular with the main triangle I'm kind of struggling with right now, the best idea is really to just take a break. Uh, give yourself some time away from painting. Or... Um, just move to a different area in the painting. So I will likely do that. So switching brushes here. A little bit more cadmium red. A little more titanium white, yellow ochre. Just throw in some sap green. Sap green, lizard and permanent. Throw in some of the background color.
As you can see, I didn't even do anything for the mouse, really. And of course it's going to get darker. So we move away from the light. I'm really use, utilizing the color value web here. Remember, this is the color value web. I just take from it. If I want to move one value up or one value down. You want to be cautious about the light and shade. So our shadow really is just here and here. Let's get the background brush. Remix the background color. Now while I still have this dark color, I'm just going to go ahead and cover the hair. So just the lizard and permanent ivory black. Get a different brush out. A little bit of medium solvent free fluid. And the reason I'm using the solvent free fluid is not because of the solvent free aspect of it, it's just because it's a much slower dryer than, um, than liquid or neomagilp. Even though it claims to be a fast dryer, it's pretty slow, I find. And right now what I need is a slow dryer. So the paint doesn't get too tacky.
I'm going to get that same brush that I used for this area. More medium just to get the paint to flow a little more. Make it a little darker. Side of the neck. And this is what you want to do if you're struggling with an area. So just paint all around it, avoid it, and then come back to it. Or like I said, just take a break. Now I'm going to go back to the background color. Now obviously in the photo reference it's not as dark, but I don't want to paint it the way it looks in the photo reference. So I threw in a little bit of yellow ochre. Just so that kind of bounces back. I'm going to change the light sensitivity so you can see a little bit more. That just made the glare worse. I'm going to reposition, excuse me, reposition the camera. So hopefully that helped out with the glare or get rid of the glare a little bit. Give some texture to the background. Sometimes for the background you can just put all kinds of colors. Doesn't really matter. It's up to you. I just want the colors to be a little bit cooler. make this edge very soft. Now with a different brush, back to the titanium white, ultramarine blue, some medium, This actually goes a lot higher up. So I'd say to about there. Ivory black, sap green. And like I was saying before, it's okay to struggle. It's normal. I'd say I'm definitely struggling with this episode a little more than last week's. And it just happens once in a while. Or sometimes if you're like me, more often than not. That's just part of the process. 
All right, so now that I avoided the subject long enough, I'm going to go back in. And instead of starting off with the eyes, this time let's start off with the lips. Clean off a brush. Try not to get too much mineral spirits on me. Titanium white, cadmium red, I have the color of the lips. Let's get the color for the top of the lips. Lizard permanent, a little bit of the background green. I'm pretty sure you're enjoying this, seeing me struggle. I think it's very important to see when artists struggle with their artwork, among other things. But um, in particular, it's not always a linear process. I guess most of us try to hide this stuff. But I'm going for it.
And no, the audio didn't break. I'm just very focused right now. So forgive my silence. Portrait painting is hard. There's no sugarcoating it. It's not an easy thing to do. Now today it's definitely very backwards because I'm working my way from the mouth up after having the struggle that I did with the eyes. Now I must change a battery before the camera goes and dies. So give me just one second. All right, so the battery has been changed. I also took a little bit of a break and read some of the comments from uh, last week's episode. So remember, these are not intended to be that realistic. So of course I'm gonna make mistakes and drawing and, and things like that, but it, it looks like you seem to appreciate uh, the paint along from last week, so hopefully this video does well. Um, I read some something about uh, online classes. I am actually very interested in online classes, uh, and starting online classes, that is. I'm teaching classes in person, but I also want to offer them online. I just haven't quite figured out how to do that yet, whether I'm going to use, um, you know, like an online service like Udemy or something, or, um, or uh, you know, trying to integrate that into my website. I don't know yet, but I definitely need to do that. Also, I saw a question about the non-toxic, any non-toxic oil paints. Uh, just traditional oil paints like these are really not that toxic uh, even lead white is not that bad as long as we don't uh, as long as we don't you know eat it or something like that of course that's an over exaggeration but for the most part these paints are not that toxic really it's still linseed and pigment I mean I suppose if you're against cadmium 
colors, then you can also, you know, find supplements. I don't really like the water mixables as much. Um, I used them for quite a while, a long time ago, and it just didn't, I don't know how to explain it, I just did, it didn't feel um, as fluid, I guess, as traditional oil paints. The only toxic stuff really that you would want to worry about, quote unquote, with oil paint is um, the solvents. So, you know, like the solvent I'm using today, the solvent free fluid. It's a pretty good uh, non toxic, I guess, medium. So again, here it is a solvent free fluid. So let's see if I can get the focus back on the camera. And um, you can also look at uh, Spike Lavender brush cleaner, Citrus brush cleaner, and you can still use traditional oil paints. So right now with this other brush, I'm trying to draw out the color for the sclera. And I really appreciate all the positive feedback on the comments. I'll just, I'll admit I'm kind of afraid of the comments. You know, after spending a lot of time uh, trying to practice these skills and share them with you, just kind of scares me once in a while to look at the comments. But I have been pretty good about email recently. Though I'm still, I'm just a couple of emails behind. So if you're waiting on an email response for me, I'm definitely going to get back to you very soon. So I think it's kind of working, going from the nose up. Obviously I overdid uh, this light on the bottom of the sclera, but we're getting somewhere. I'm kind of building the eyes from the inside out, quite literally, the interior shapes out, that is. Whoops.
So her eyes are, of course, way more blue than that. So let's just go with ultramarine blue. Titanium white. Sap green. So that's a little more blue. Now I want to get the ring around the iris. Or should I say the dark area around the iris. So I have a mix of the mineral spirits and the, um, the medium here. And let's thin it out even more. See how it's kind of almost dripping. And um, hopefully I I'm not rambling too much in this episode, but I am very interested in teaching more classes um, in my area. I'm so I'm so thrilled that both of the classes that I offered uh, ended up generating enough students to actually run. So I am teaching a portrait drawing and a portrait painting class currently. Very excited about that and honored that enough students were interested in taking a class with me. But I would also like to teach uh, figure classes too. So if you're in the Maryland area, you know um, a school that would accept me as an instructor, you want to help me out. Could really use the help. Now the eyes are starting to take shape. Little by little, let's use the back of the brush to highlight, if it'll even work. Usually it does. There we go. Cool. Easy way for the highlight. Now what I'll do is just make the highlight a little smaller. the ultramarine blue.
I'll switch brushes now. So I'm going to go back to the exterior shapes here. And try and make that shadow shape a little more specific rather than it rather than it just being a, a dot. Let's try to get a different brush. Okay. So I'll do my best not to blend out the planes too much. I do want them to be a little softer. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a little more definition up here.
I'm also thinking of some of the other comments that I read and um, as I'm putting in these shapes. Someone else asked what I do with my paints after I'm done with them. After I'm done with the, the sitting, I have a little plastic container. I just put them in a plastic container, uh, seal the container and put it in the freezer and reuse them. Use the fan brush. Hopefully, I can get rid of the glare up here. Kind of worked. Now with the ear, I don't really want to do too much. So just burnt umber, a laser and permanent, and just a few brush strokes really. Really don't want to do much for the ear. Though I don't want to omit the uh, jewelry she's wearing. So a little bit of ivory black, sap green. Thin out the paint. See how it's kind of dripping. Something like that. Remember a thinner paint sticks onto thicker paint. Hopefully the earring doesn't drip off there. So I feel like the um, the chin might be up, or it might be a little too far down. Let's push this up a little bit. To try to get more of her likeness.
So let's see, I'm going to sit back. Now the likeness isn't quite there. Now I think it could have a lot to do with the jawbone. So I'm actually going to put the half tone here. Clearly that's wrong. So I'm going to have to move this up a little bit. So I'm going to scrape off some excess paint. Why don't we just use the palette knife for a change. knife one thing I don't want to do is try to uh, blend too much so I'm just trying to add enough paint so that I can go in with a uh, softer brush and then make the edges softer at, once I have the paint on here So now that I have the paint on there, let's get a different brush. And soften away. I still messed up. That still has to go higher up. And if that's the case, then this might have to go up too a little bit. Palette knife gives a nice painterly look, I think.
uh, one of my favorite teachers used to say something like this, don't lose the painting for the likeness. So even though we're trying to get the uh, likeness of the model, it can take over the painting if you stress too much about likeness. And it all depends on what you're trying to do, but you know, as I always say, we're not human photocopiers. So, you know, when, when something happens and somebody wants to document it, you know, like there's a major scientific discovery, the scientist isn't going to say, well, let's go find a classical realist painter to perfectly document it. That's not what they're going to do. They're going to they're gonna take out a camera and they're going to document it, collect data on it. They're not going to say, let's quick, quick, let's go find a classical realist painter because we know that they depict everything exactly how it is. No, that's not how it works. It's an interpretive process. Though we want to obtain likeness to the model, it's not a good idea. I don't, I don't think it's that healthy to stress too much about a perfect likeness. have to clean off a brush and put on highlight for the nose. A little bit of the alizarin permanent, the sap green, cadmium red. And I'm going to very carefully try to delineate the bulb of the nose. Now using a line um, on this edge is usually kind of frowned upon, but I need it to delineate the outside shape of the nose. So I'll use the line, but then I'll uh, kind of blend it out later. I'm going to be cautious not to overly soften or soften, however you want to say. Just don't want to make this too soft, just a little bit softer than it once was. And I think I overdid it, so 
I'm gonna go back, add a little more definition there without making it too sharp. Even the eyebrow, the eyebrows are gonna get some variability in the edge work. A little bit of mineral spirits, burnt umber, lizard permanent, ivory black. I'm gonna be very cautious about this. I'm not going to paint uh, her hair that's on her forehead the way I see it in the picture. Instead, I'm going to edit a little bit to go with the kind of the sweeping movement here of this picture. I just feel like painting that one triangular um, piece of hair here would disrupt the composition a little bit. I use the back end of the brush here, put a little jewelry, a little speck of jewelry that she has. And use the fan brush. Try to eliminate some of the glare here. Go back to the background brush. Add a little more texture to the background. I don't think I'm going to blur this brush stroke out. I kind of en enjoy that, that brush mark. So obviously it's not a perfect likeness and it's not as realistic as um, some of the other painting videos that I've uploaded, but you have seen every single brush stroke involved in this painting. 
I did speak a lot about um, planes of color and um, we even overcame some obstacles uh, with the drawing here. You saw how I moved about uh, avoiding the problem area and then eventually working my way back towards that area. And right now, I think one of the last adjustments that I'll make is just with the, um, the edge quality. I'm just making this edge here a little bit sharper uh, while kind of pushing these other edges just a little bit soft. I'm not pushing them, I can't even speak, making them softer. Softer relative to this. Maybe a little sharper here and soft soft over here. So like I said, not as realistic, obviously. But it's a fun exercise. And remember, you will have the photo reference. I'll post it to the Facebook photo reference group. The same day that I upload this episode. All right, before I make things too soft, I should call it. Okay, putting the brush down. All right, that being said, I really hope that this week's episode helps you out. Remember, if you would like to see more painting videos such as this one, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you would like to uh, take classes with me or purchase artwork from me, I have links to my Etsy shop and uh, links to the classes and the schools where I will be teaching, though I am looking for more um, classes to teach in the Maryland area. So if you know of any um, schools that would uh, like to have me teaching there, um, any art schools or anything like that in Maryland, please let me know. Remember, I also have a Patreon account where I do live streams and live chats and uh, support on Patreon really, really helps me out so much. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode. And just now, actually, I just saw an update on my uh, Gmail, so I'd like to give a new patron shout out to Michael Stember. Thank you so much for becoming a member on my Patreon account. It really does help so much. I wish you the best in all of your artwork and don't forget to check out the live chat. Remember the live chat will be this Sunday and I sent the link to all of the members and the live chat tier and up. So just go ahead and go on Patreon and check out the link for the live chat. Remember that's Sunday, uh, this Sunday at 12 p.m. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one.